In this video, I will tell you a bit more about the Kirkpatrick model of evaluation. I will introduce the model and I will tell you a bit more about how it is applied in a higher education institutional context. The Kirkpatrick model of evaluation was originally developed to undertake a full evaluation of company training courses for employees to analyze their return on investment in it. But over the years, it has become one of the dominant models of evaluation in the context of education and training in a wide range of scenarios, where an organization is in particular interested in measuring the impact of the education or training. The model is fairly simple and is based around four types of evaluation. The first is a level of a participant reaction, which means the degree to which participants find their training favorable, engaging and relevant to their job. The second level is learning. The degree to which participants acquire the intended knowledge, skills, attitudes, etc. based on their participation in the training. The third level of the module is behavior. That means the degree to which participants apply what they learned during training when they are back on the job. Lastly, the fourth level of the module is results. That is the degree to which targeted outcomes occur as a result of training and the support and accountability package. So, Basically, level three is the impact on the people that went to the training, whereas level four is about the impact that the people who went through the training have on their wider environment, just to specify what is the difference between these two levels. The whole idea of this model is therefore that every aspect of a training or course if, is evaluated from the moment participants enter the training up to the way in which it benefits them afterwards. I will now go in a bit more detail into the different levels of the Kirkpatrick model. Starting with level one, the participant level, which is also often referred to as satisfaction. The idea behind level one is that it happens immediately after the end of a training. It can happen immediately after you have finished a complete course, but very often it happens on a per lesson basis and is an immediate reaction to the lesson itself. So for example, as a teacher, you can take the last five minutes of a lesson to gather all participants' reaction and feedback before you close the lesson. So therefore, it's very important that this happens more or less immediately. Areas you can ask about are, for example, uh, were the participants pleased with the program? What is their perception if they learned anything? What is the likelihood that they apply the content in their work or in their further learning? What is the effectiveness of particular strategies that are being explored through the, through the course? And is there a perceived need for follow-up or an issue with the level of difficulty. Basically, the main value for instant reaction right after a lesson is that it immediately detects errors, which means that the lecturer can immediately try to solve this for the next lessons. Therefore, immediate reaction is important and should be collected throughout the course. I will now give you some guidelines for evaluating reaction immediately afterwards. Firstly, you should design a method to evaluate reaction. The more interactive this is, the better. It's also good to encourage written comments so you can analyze them properly afterwards. So for example, you can ask students to put their comments on post-it notes and put them on the wall to collect their feedback. It's very important to try to get a 100% immediate response from your students, because often the students who are least likely to say something when you ask for their opinion are the ones who might have problems, who are less satisfied. So try to really take that into account. Also, of course, you need to try to get as honest as possible the responses. If desirable, you can have some delayed reactions. So if necessary, you can ask them to think a bit more about their, what they've thought about the course and get back to you a day after or in the next lesson. But still try not to make too much time between the lesson itself and the feedback that you get. If it's not possible to get the feedback immediately, it is possible to get a delayed reaction to the, to the course. So maybe a day afterwards or, or in the next lesson. But don't wait too long because it's important to get the immediate feedback from students as, as fast as possible. It's also important that when you look at, the, uh, look at the results and you analyze the results, that you have to determine what are acceptable standards. So what level of feedback is acceptable for you and, and what level means that you have to take action to improve. And of course, it's also important that when you have continuous evaluations throughout the course, that you compare the reactions in later lessons with previous reactions that you have received, just to see if the level of satisfaction improves throughout the course. 
Of course, gathering people's immediate reactions doesn't always tell you what participants have actually learned. It only tells you how happy they are. So the second level of the Kirkpatrick model is evaluating learning. How do you evaluate learning? You evaluate learning by giving students an assessment and assessing what they actually know. There are different types of assessment you can use, like continuous assessment and of course assessment, but basically assessment allows you to evaluate learning. Things you should consider here include, for example, what did the participants learn in the program? What is the extent to which participants changed their attitudes, increased their knowledge and or increased their skills? What exactly did the participant learn and not learn? And it would be specifically beneficial to do a pre-test and a post-test and compare the results so you really know what extra knowledge has, have they gained through the course. It requires, therefore, developing specific learning objectives to be evaluated. To do a proper assessment, you need to develop first specific learning outcomes and learning objectives to be evaluated. It's also important that the learning measures are objective and quantifiable. There's many different forms in which the assessment can take place. For example, paper pencil tests, performance on skills tests, simulations, role plays, case studies, etc., etc. I'll give you now some possible guidelines for evaluating learning. For example, you can develop a written exam which is based on the desired learning objectives. In that case, you can also use the exam as a pretest. This will provide participants with a worksheet or activity sheet that will allow you for tracking their learning during the session. It's always important also to emphasize and repeat what are the key learning points during the session. And then you can use the same pretest exam also as a post-test exam to see exactly what has been learned by the course, by the participants. So now we've looked into students' reactions and the learning that has taken place. But the fact that they can recall what they have learned doesn't necessarily mean that they are applying this learning as well. Therefore, we also want to evaluate behavior. In a model, behavior means the extent to which the learning is being applied in the workplace. Very often, this impact actually doesn't happen. And why doesn't it happen? Well, there's all sorts of different reasons. The training might not meet the job requirements, for example, or the opportunity for them to actually try out what they have learned might be so far in the future that they forget how to do it properly. Or they might not have enough support from work to implement it. Behavioral change is not just a result from teaching and learning, of course. A person must have the desire to change. They need to know how to do it, and they should be working in the right environment that allows them, and ideally, they should be awarded. The advantage of evaluating behavior is, is that if you understand the climate people are working in, then perhaps you can tailor your course to be better adapted to the participants and thus make it better for them. Some guidelines for evaluating behavior. First of all, you need to allow time for behavior change to take place. It's not very useful to send participants a questionnaire just a few weeks later when there hasn't been enough time for the new knowledge and skills to have sunken in and brought into practice. So typically you'd look at about 12 months, maybe 18, before you can really evaluate behavior change. Also, you don't necessarily just look at the students themselves to evaluate change. You can also interview others who have a good view on how the training has impacted the students. For example, their employer or others who work with them in the period after the training or course. You can use different tools for evaluating behavior, such as surveys, portfolios, interviews, etc. Of course, it's also important to make sure that the information gained through this process is actually taken on board by the teacher. Have they used it to improve their course, their methods of teaching, etc. Finally, I will go to the fourth level of the Kirkpatrick model of evaluation that looks at the ultimate results of the training for the organization where the student works or is going to work. This level is closely related to the previous level, but looks specifically on how the change in behavior of an individual impacts the organization or community they are working in or participating in as a whole. Here you look if the final results that occurred are a result of the training itself or of something else. In a more corporate environment, you can also address this in terms of return of investment for the training. Finally, I will give you also some guidelines for evaluating results and how can you evidence this. Certainly this is highly dependent on the specific context of the type of training, the types of participants, etc. But in general, you can say that you can only measure impact properly if you first have a benchmark of what was the situation before and then compare it with the situation after. So you can measure before and after and compare it. 
Equally, you should allow time for change to take place, sometimes even four or five years after the training has taken place. And also you should repeat evaluation at appropriate times in that period. If possible, you can use in a control group, for example, compare the workplace of former students with other organizations to see what is the impact of the learning compared with organizations where the students haven't been. Lastly, of course, you should consider the cost first the benefits of doing level four. Do remember though that other factors can affect results and it's impossible to be absolutely sure about direct correlation with the training and the education. But generally, a lot of evidence of impact can be gathered. So be satisfied with evidence if proof is not possible.